Hello everybody, welcome to um, our webinar. Just as you're coming in, we would love if you would be able to put what country you're currently on in the chat. We like to do this at the beginning of every webinar. <clears throat> Give it a few minutes for people to drift in. So for those just joining now, please uh, pop in the chat the country that you're tuning in from today. That would be excellent. And feel free to use the chat throughout the webinar. Um, our lovely staff member Poppy will be answering any questions and she'll also be um, alerting myself and Lisa, our guest, to any questions that pop up in the chat. We're also going to be using Mentimeter throughout the presentation as well. So if you haven't used it before, it's pretty simple, but you just need to make sure you have your mobile phone on hand. And then when the Mentimeter slides pop up, you take a photo of the QR code and it sends you to the Mentimeter page. There's also a web address at the top and Poppy will assist in the chat with any matters to do with Mentimeter. So let's launch into things with our amazing guest, Lisa Maloney. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Thank you. And at the beginning of every webinar, we like to pay acknowledgement. So um, I would like to say that Reconciliation Victoria acknowledges the traditional owners of country throughout Victoria and recognises First Peoples' continuing connection to lands, waters and community. We pay our respects to Elders past and present who carry the memories, traditions, cultures and aspirations of First Peoples and who forge the path ahead for emerging leaders. And I'm coming from you today from Rundari Woiwurrung land on the Kulin Nation. Over to you, Lisa. All right, beautiful. Thank you um, to Reconciliation Victoria for, for part of that. Um, I would like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from the beautiful Woi Wurrung country. So the beautiful hills and the plains and, um, and I'd like to pay respect to the elders past and present and also um, my thoughts are with all Aboriginal people as we're on this road to referendum um, and hoping that um, things go okay at the end of it um, and that they take care for, along that space. Um, just a little bit of a different thing. Um, I used to be the um, education officer at Reconciliation Victoria quite a number of, of years ago. Uh, so I sort of have such a, a, a connection with that and I thought, as a teacher, here's a bit of an idea about you could use this for your next acknowledgement because teachers always like to do that. Um, so a secondary teacher, I also worked as a bushland education officer as well. So I sort of, I've been an educator for over 20, 20 years. It sounds really bad. Um, so these are some of the people that have been part of my reconciliation journey. So I, it's a really beautiful way to actually acknowledge all First Nations people. So beautiful left uh, top left corner is Japri. Um, she is a Yolnu elder. Um, and having been up to Gama a number of times and meet her, she's this quietly spoken but very strong woman. And uh, she taught me about deep listening. So you, you literally had to lean in to her to listen. So you were listening with your whole body. And that was one of, it's an important thing with Yolnu. And, and there's often when they speak, there's, they stop and they wait um, and there's a space and being comfortable to be in that space. And I think, you know, that's really good. The other thing is Japri is very passionate about Mother Earth and what we are doing to Mother Earth. So, you know, um, it's a beautiful way and that's but that sort of one. Um, there is the church with the Santa Teresa community out of Alice Springs. So um, that's a pretty amazing space where I actually learned what uh, community is all about and what a remote community is like to live in and all the, you know, trials and tribulations. But also the spirituality there, you can see that's the church um, and they combine the Aboriginal spirituality 
with Christian um, and or Catholic spirituality as well. So that's a really beautiful thing there. Uncle Shane Charles, who's our RecFit co-chair, I've been lucky to um, go on to Yorta Yorta country with Uncle Shane um, and actually visit Kumragunja um, and a lot of the other places around there. So when you actually visit those places, you actually feel, feel them. So, you know, learning all countries are a pretty amazing thing. The other three women that are there are my beautiful um, weaving teachers. Um, one of those is Auntie um, Glenda Nichols. Um, if you went to the triennial at NGV a couple of years ago with the beautiful net with flowers, um, that was Auntie Glenda's work. So um, these women have been part of my reconciliation journey. Um, you've got the beautiful in the top middle, Sherry Balcom. Um, who's through, I met her through the Aboriginal Catholic Ministry um, and, you know, such a beautiful friendship we've we've had over this time. But the person that I re really like to focus is the top right-hand corner and that's Arnie Vicky Clark. Um, she is part of Reconciliation Victoria, um, but she has also been a big part of, and it was actually her, her um, idea, the fire carrier program and getting that off the ground. But she actually has inspired me to start this reconciliation journey back in you know, 2010, 2011, um, when she came and spoke to students at Avila College where I was. And she was showing photos of, you know, Mungo and Bell Ranald. And I grew up not far from there. And I actually felt a connection to what she was talking about. And I thought if I've got a connection after a couple of generations, then imagine her connection to that space after, you know, um, 2,000 or more generations. All right, next slide. Um, if you've ever been up to Mungo, it's in a most amazing space. So Ani Vicky is, um, so there's the three groups that look after Lake Mungo, so the Nyampa, the Barkindji and the Muddy Muddy, and that's um, Aunty Vicky's, Vicky's a Muddy Muddy woman. Um, this particular day, anyone who has been on an excursion or camping with students, you know that anything that can go wrong will go wrong and they are very stressful experiences. So, you know, we had it rain and we didn't even think we were going to get, get in and just lots and lots of things sort of just went wrong. And then the next morning we got up and we always used to do watch the sunrise over the Mungo, the lake, Willandra Lake. So it's about 40 k's across to the other side. And this particular morning, because it had rained the night before and it never rains up there, it's, it's very, very dry, um, the whole lake had filled with fog and it was the most mystical experience and reconciliation is a bit like that. There's a lot of work, a lot of things go wrong, you get setbacks, but eventually all that hard work will be worth it because you'll be given a gift like this. And Mungo is very, you know, it is an amazing place. And if you haven't been there, um, you put it on your list. If you've been to Uluru and you feel the sort of the, the spirit of the people there, um, then Mungo is just next level. It's pretty amazing. All right, Sarah, thank you. All right. So, so yeah, yeah. We, we, as I mentioned, we're popping a number of Mentimeters in throughout this presentation. So I'm just starting the Menti now. And if you could get your phones when the QR code pops up, if it's popping up. Um, not popping up on my screen. Here we go. <laughs> Um, always in troubles with technology. So just grab your phone, scan the QR code. <clears throat> if that's a problem, go to menti.com and enter the code that is next to the QR code. And we'd love to know, just at the beginning of this webinar, how you rate your personal knowledge about First Nations perspectives. So we'd love to get some results in. That would be great. Lovely. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone. And there's no aspersions about this as well. Like I see reconciliation journey as a continuum of constantly <clears throat> learning new things. So please feel free to put any of the responses there without any kind of um, 
surface versions on whatever. If you're, you've got low knowledge, that's an amazing starting point to grow and um, further your journey. And sometimes I think I know a medium amount, then I find out a bit more. And I'm like, well, I actually know very little. And sometimes the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that one, Sarah. And, you know, the most important step is the first step on your reconciliation journey. Um, and, yeah, that's why I wanted to share that picture of Mungo is because sometimes life deals you difficulties and it's it's frustrating and lots of barriers, um, but then you get success and it's the best thing ever. So, you know, celebrate it all wins. Sorry, I'm thinking oh, that's all right. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so we just got another mentee too that would like to ask you as well because we know there's quite a few barriers in this space, perceived or um, actual barriers in terms of time constraints and things. Yeah, I just gave you a, a little nod of, um, uh, of an answer there. So I really love, again, if you can um, just pop in a couple of words of here into this word cloud, what are some things, oh my gosh, sorry, what are some things that are barriers um, for you currently to including First Nations perspectives in your classroom? <clears throat> now, really, it could be anything. It could be the one I've just said, which is time, but it could be a million other things. So, um, yeah, lovely. Thanks, people, for answering. Definitely. Ooh. Yep. These are great answers and really common answers as well. Um, I, we've asked these similar questions in other webinars. And so, yeah, these are pretty much the type of responses I thought we'd be getting. Crowded curriculum, yes. Unsure, intolerance, time. Yeah, that's coming up as a big one. Uncertainty ideas, opinions, and confidence. Yep. Thanks, everyone. <clears throat> Keep adding to that if you like, because it will tick away in the background. We'll just give people another minute to answer. But I think we're really getting a pretty uniform set of answers there, wouldn't you say, Lisa? Yeah. Yep. yep. All righty. <clears throat> so, I mean, here... Um, here's another, well, these are the main three barriers, time, knowledge and fear, and I think that that's sort of basically what was there. If you're looking for a really great resource, um, Wingaroo um, on Facebook has a lot of, you know, just the little squares, I don't know what they're special, not, tiles I think they're called, um, that that go through some of the, the issues uh, um, that, but also resources as well. They also look at celebrating significant dates. So, for example, on Marbo Day, they'll do some tiles about Eddie Marbo and stuff. So, yeah, they're really great. Okay, next. And just everybody, we do send out a resource sheet at the end of the webinar as well with extra resources related to this topic. Hmm. Um, I know that, that one of the things that you said, you know, like is people are not sure and they sort of, worried about doing the wrong thing. And I think that's having worked with Aunty Vicky for so long, um, you you sort of, you realise that to not do anything is actually, you know, it's, it's not helping the cause. You're better to do something uh, with respect, with humility, and if you get it wrong, then that's okay. And as teachers, we're expected to know everything and we don't know everything, we're human. And this is where I think students, especially the way early childhood is at the moment with reconciliation, including First Nation perspectives, is that our students sometimes know more than we do. And it's an opportunity for us to say, look, we didn't learn about this when we we're at school, let's go on a learning journey together. So that can actually be part of, you know, getting past that. Um, one very important thing is truth and reconciliation is also about building relationships. Relationships take time um, and, and it's worth going places and, you know, going to the Sorry Day March or heading to the Survival Day um, celebration. 
Uh, all Doing all of those things is really important. Um, and I also like this one, one's ability to sit in discomfort is critical to changing and challenging the future. Like we can't get on a bike and do it perfect the first time. There's going to be falls, there's going to be spills, but it's how we get back on that bike and how we move on that's really important. Okay, Sarah. All right, so I just wanted to share this poem with me, uh, with you. Um, it's humility. So I think it's something that we need to think about. Respect and humility are the two things that, and gratitude, actually three things that we could look at. So humility is not a feeling, it's a standard by which to assess your actions, a guiding star by which to navigate the complexities of building respectful relationships with Indigenous peoples, Indigenous sovereignties on stolen land. Humility means not stepping into Indigenous spaces or conversations, but instead first asking whether you should be there at all. And if Indigenous people like you invite you in, asking yourself, what is a respectful way to contribute? These questions are not to be asked once, but over and over. Walking humbly means walking slowly, considering every step every gesture, every word and every impact. So that's um, a poem from Living on Stolen Land um, by Amberlin. And this is as teachers we need to sort of think about what we're doing and sort of be present in that space. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Sorry, I'm on mute. We'd just like to know what school sector you're from because um, in case it hasn't been obvious to you from this point on. Lisa is talking about a program that was um, had its inceptions in the Catholic sector. So we just wanted to get a really, um, a snapshot really of where people are coming from. And just also use that point to say that while some things in the rest of the presentation will be spoken about from a Catholic school perspective, it doesn't mean that you can't take the ideas um, that are talked about and use them in your work, in your schools. Ooh. And I have worked in all school. I've, I've worked in government schools. I've worked in Catholic schools. I've also worked in at independent schools. I've worked for council. Um, so that means I've worked with early childhood, uh, primary and secondary. So uh, a lot of these qualified, Lisa. <laughs> I'm overqualified. I have a shopping list for a CV, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but it also means I understand the different systems at different levels. Um, so there are ways that, you know, the stuff that I've learned and presenting with the fire carrier program that will be um, applicable for, for other people. So mm -hmm. um, one Catholic school. Yeah. We'll move on. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. All right. So um, the fire carrier program, so that's what we're talking about today. So it originally started with the Aboriginal Catholic Ministry um, and that's sort of where Arnie Vicky and Sherry Belcom um, were part of that. And so part of their, their role, um, Vicky came up with this idea for the fire carrier program and I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, so... It's now looked after by the Opening the Doors Foundation. So that's sort of self-determination education, and I'll go into that in a minute. All right, thank you. So my connection, um, I worked at Avila College in Mount Waverley, and they are one of the first schools to be part of the fire carrier program. And they also had a very strong reconciliation group, as you can see there. Um, so I had the privilege of... Uh, being a, the staff leader with them for a year or two, um, but also through Avila going up to uh, Santa Teresa community and taking some of the students up there. So Avila has a very strong connection with Santa Teresa community um, as some of the students from up there came down and actually went to school at Avila in the 80s. So they were doing, Avila were doing ex, um, cultural exchanges um, or cultural immersion experiences long before they they became a thing for most schools. So Avila has a very so, a very warm place in my heart. Okay. So head, heart, hands. Thank you. So what it is, so at the moment this, this program is for Catholic schools, but there are elements in it 
and I will go through how you can think about it in your other schools as well. So it means friends igniting reconciliation through education. So it's just in Catholic schools at the moment. Um, but, you know, there are lots of things that you can take away and take maybe back into your schools. Okay, thank you. All right, so do you have a reconciliation group at your school? So this could also include social justice because some schools have the social justice side. Um, yep. Yep, that'd be great if everyone could just let us know. We're really curious. Do you have a reconciliation group at your school currently? And if you don't have one, um, that's please okay. Let us know. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> And schools are very busy places. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, to try to do a lot of co-curricular activities, sometimes it, it's a bit more challenging. But, look, it's it's great that there are even seven schools mm. um, on our list that have it because... And I'll just add, too, that I, if people want to put yes if you're on the pathway to um, having a reconciliation group as well, if you're, like, formulating one but you haven't set up one yet, that, that still sort of gives an indication of the... Of the driver of your school. I think it's great. You're right, Lisa. Seven is excellent given mm -hmm. all the time constraints that we talked about before. And the way I, I look at it too is that if it makes a difference to one person, then it's made made a difference. So mm -hmm. yeah. So this is our beautiful Annie Vicky Clark. Um, so each fire carrier participant has committed his or her selves to bring true peace, justice and reconciliation, not only to their schools, but to their families and their communities. Project started as a dream and has evolved into something so much greater. So at the moment, um, there are over 100 schools that uh, take part in it. So it's an opt in and in the Melbourne Archdiocese. So that's sort of basically like the Melbourne metro area. You've also got, so Victoria is split up into four archdioceses or four areas. So the Sandhurst, which is sort of like Bendigo, all the way up sort of Shepparton, Echuca way. Um, they run their own fire carrier program, but they run it as part of their, um, they've got their, they call it, the Sandhurst education. So if we get, yeah, so Melbourne's called MAC, so the Melbourne Archdiocese of Catholic Education, um, Catholic schools. Um, so Sandhurst has their own and they run their own. So if you do a search for fire carrier, you'll probably come up with Sandhurst's resources. Um, so yeah, that sort of, that was started initially with Vicky. So a lot of the school, every single school in Sandhurst is actually a fire carrier school. So it's a little bit different to way Melbourne, the MAC schools are run. All right, next. So it started in 2009. And if you've ever sat around a fire, um, I think, and you've been on camp with kids, it's a really important time to have those really deep and meaningful conversations. And it's a really important um, part. And with Aunty Vicky, if the first thing you do when you arrive at a place, um, when you're camping, she starts the fire. And it's a very, you know, a, a very sacred part of who she is as a First Nations person. Um, and it also honours that spiritual connection to Mother Earth. Okay, thank you. So what is a fire carrier? So fire carriers are staff and students. So this is where it's a little bit different from a wrap because fire carrier program is, has a lot of student involvement in it as well. So they share a passion for learning about First Nations culture and history, committed to sharing this knowledge and promoting within and beyond the school community. Um, so it's a really, really important sort of program that way. It's about promoting respect, fairness and inclusion for First Nations people. And I can, I'll go into a little bit more about that when we get to the Opening the Doors Foundation. Um, so a fire carry school is a Catholic school committed to reconciliation and culturation. So if you like to think about it is actually sort of including that First Nation culture in your school, that making it that culturally safe. You can think about it as unlearning and relearning. Um, yeah, so that sort of that's in culture. Um, and the other thing is that they complete a school covenant. So you may have a reconciliation action plan 
a school covenant and this is why I sort of think this program is so amazing. Back in 2009, um, as part of the school, as part of the fire carrier program, all schools completed a covenant. So a covenant is a promise between two people. And this covenant was way before reconciliation action plans. So I just thought, you know, it became really a big thing. So it's pretty amazing. Um, and so now that covenant is with the Opening the Doors Foundation. It used to be with the um, Aboriginal Catholic Ministry. Um, and that includes the actions for the coming year. So though the documents of the covenant is actually accessed all the time, um, schools send me their, their covenants and I will be able to help them and point them in the direction for where to find resources to help or have you tried this? So it's a lot of support um, for schools to go through that process. The other thing that's really important is you may have heard, you know, like if you think about the referendum that's coming up with The Voice, it's all about self-determination. Um, and it's Aboriginal people having a say in things that affect them. So what through, you know, working with the Opening the Doors Foundation, it's supporting self-determination and education for First Nation families because through the Opening the Doors Foundation, these students are able to go to Catholic schools. Um, the other important thing is that it's a more culturally safe space. And anecdotally, um, I wish I had a, a video camera to that, but one of the students, primary school students, she was eight. Um, she was a Yorta Yorta girl. And she said to me, she went to this other school and she didn't like it. Um, it didn't feel right. And then when she went to the school she's currently at, which has just gone through their commissioning ceremony and of, of becoming a fire carrier school, she said she felt at home because she could see herself. Um, and that stuff, that's that's why the fire, I, I love the fire carrier program because it is like that. And there's a couple of schools out in Melton um, that have families that have now decided to come to their school as opposed to another school because they were a fire carrier school and they knew that their children were going to be in a, a more culturally safe space than, than what the other, other choice of school was. Okay. So... Um, when we're looking at creating change, we go head, hand, heart. So first we learn something, then it goes into our hearts, um, and then we actually do something with our hands. And to me that's what reconciliation is about, is those sort of three things. And we talk about um, reconciliation is about listening with an open heart, and I think that's a really, really important thing is when we, you know, we have that open heart. Um, and a lot of Catholic schools and other religious-based schools um, will find the social justice and the hands and acting for change is, is a big focus of that particular school. Um, I used to work at MLC and they were very big on social justice. And I remember being there just after the Boxing Day tsunami and, you know, what that school did and put into action was, was amazing. Um, so that's, you know, the hands-on change for social justice. Okay. So fire carries are opening doors. So that's the Opening the Doors Foundation. Next. So what Opening the Doors Foundation does is it actually gives grants to um, Aboriginal families and students to go to Catholic schools. So it doesn't pay school fees as such, but it pays for all of those other extra things that puts people on a level playing field. So um, it, it, you sort of see, you see so many students, go and have a look on their website. There's a lot of students on there that uh, are doing amazing things because they've been supported. You know, uh, students that have been supported for a few years um, are now, you know, school captains. Uh, the opportunities and that are there for them. So in the 23 years that they've been running, uh, they have helped or given grants to over 10,000 students. So, and it's all, it started around a, a kitchen table and every, every cent that's there, there's no government assistance, every cent is um, from people donating and, you know, philanthropic 
Um, and part of being a fire carrier school is that you support the Opening the Doors Foundation. So next. Um, have a look at the website. Some of you might know Geordie um, if you're into footy. Uh, she's a pretty good AFLW player. Um, but she's also part of the First People's Assembly and all that now too. So um, it's really great to see alumni, their success and, and, you know, coming back and, you know, being part of it. Next. So you can have a look more of them. The boring bits, but the bits that are really important and why the fire carrier fits so well. We all know with all the new child safe standards, um, some of those actually focus on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children. Um, so the fire carrier program helps to address quite a few of those things. And because it requires you to, you, to um, have a student involvement in it too, that's a really important part of that child safe standards as well. Um, Except the CECV, all of those other compliance um, areas, us, every school will have to deal or be part of all of those sorts of things. And the Fire Care Program is actually listed in the CECV, so the Catholic Education um, Education Plan. So the Fire Care Program is recognised by that. Okay, next. So we'd just love to know if your school has a reconciliation action plan or for the person that's here from the Catholic school, if you if they have um, a school covenant as well. So that would be really great if people could just pick up their phones again and have quick dogs and mentee. <clears throat> and I love that people are working towards mm -hmm. one. I've um, seen quite a few schools out. Um, in the outer suburbs of Melbourne that are taking their time with creating a wrap and really focusing on a couple of different key areas to get them really right rather than rushing through. And I think that's a really lovely um, way to approach it as well because it is really taking the time to delve deeply um, and make some really true actions rather than sort of rushing through it and, and not taking the time to consider um, the elements of the wrap. And, I mean, that's really important part of the Reconciliation Action Plan is taking that time and making them those authentic actions. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the school, when I was working with, with RecVic, is a lot of the schools would say to me that it's what they learnt in those round-the-table discussions when, you know, they were trying to draft it that was when the, the real powerful stuff happened. Um, and, and it's something that you have to make sure that you can put stuff there that's achievable as well. We'd all love to have schools where, you know, First Nations perspectives are part of every single subject, but we know that that takes time. And so, you know, put little actions that you know that you can achieve. Um, that's really important. And if you're struggling too, then you can feel free to reach out to me um, and my email will be included in the info pack that we send out to you. Um, but also Reconciliation Australia are the holders of most of the reconciliation, reconciliation action plans um, that are registered, but I'm really happy to help guide people through more local Victorian-based ideas. Yeah, and that's where the Narragunna Wally platform is is really good and part of it. So, yeah. oh, my phone's ringing. Okay, so when I'm talking the school covenant, um, so remember this is this is in a Catholic lens. So there's three core values that they actually look at. So it, it's a framework. It's a bit like a reconciliation plan, but it, it's different. Um, but you can have a reconciliation plan and a covenant, um, and that cover the reconciliation action plan can be one of your school covenant um, actions if you wish to do that. So it's reflected in practical goals and actions, and this is more of a living document. So it's looked at all the time, um, and it's handed over from one year to the next. So, for example, you know when we were at I was at Avila, they had the outgoing year twelve captains would then hand over the covenant 
to the incoming um, new captains, reconciliation captains. So, you know, it's part of that handing over um, and transferring, you know, that knowledge from one year to the next. Um, yeah, so that's really important to sort of have that. So the three areas, it's split into three core values. So the message stick, think about this as being like the head. So it's used to transmit messages. So this is where it's recognising cultural perspective and this is where things like having cultural awareness and understanding training for staff but also to make sure that when we're taking um, messages into our classrooms that we are putting making sure that they are culturally safe spaces for, for in deep discussion to happen um, First Nation culture is visible and celebrated. Um, I've walked into some schools and I, ha I haven't seen an Aboriginal flag, but there's an Australian flag there. So, you know, an acknowledgement plaque on the front gate, all of those sorts of, seems small, but they actually have a lot of meaning and, and um, pressure, uh, not pressure, um, meaning okay. and power. <laughs> I'm under pressure. Um, <laughs> a commitment to ongoing staff professional learning. And it is one of our at school ones that they we actually have to address that. Um, so schools have to commit to it anyway. So just making sure that that happens, both internal and external. Um, uh, First Nation perspectives in the curriculum is important. Now, I know a lot of you said that you, it's an overcrowded curriculum, and this is where you probably heard this word before. This is where embedding um, curriculum in the curriculum it makes it a lot easier. Um, I could give you lots of examples. So, for example, if you were looking at seasons, you could use seasons to teach maths and fractions. You could use it to teach graphing. You could use it in art. So it's thinking about it differently. Um, it's like choosing a book by a First Nations author to study because then you're going to, you know, actually learn about Aboriginal culture um, as well as have a great book to study because there's some pretty amazing authors out there okay so this is one of the things um this is a what they call the proud race project so avila had 20 i think it's 24 of these beautiful bollards and each one was um for a famous or powerful or you know an influential aboriginal person um Arnie, Arnie betty pike you know I've, i should have given a warning she's no longer with us and neither's um, Arnie Gerilyn. Um, so this was one of the ways that Aboriginal culture was shown front and centre um, and that information was, you know, uh, students learnt more and then presented them by this way, okay? Um, so the other one is a campfire. So it's where people meet. Um, this is where you actually have a lot of the deep conversations um, and because... This, we, this is in Catholic schools. It's understanding First Nations spirituality in terms of Catholic spirituality and identity. And if you've been to the Aboriginal Catholic ministry, um, you will see a lot of those symbols in that there. The church at Santa Teresa um, had murals that were painted by the Aranda people, um, artists of that community, and they, you know, had had Jesus with dark skin and they had Australian animals. And so it, it's blending those. But it's also coming together and thinking about um, how their spiritual connection to, to land, to water, to sky and to country and honouring that. So, you know, it, caring for land, caring for country. Um, so that's sort of where those, those fit. All right, next. Um, this is the beautiful stained glass window at Aboriginal Catholic Ministry. I was leaving there late one night and the light just happened to be um, shining in the right spot. So you can see what ACM have done is they've, they've looked at Catholic um, symbols, but they've also put that First Nations um, spin on it and you can see like the it's not dot paintings it's cross hatching which is oh, not cross hatching is geometric and lines which was down here you can see um, a man with a message stick and the possum skin cloak um, you can see the a regent honey the and you can see bunjil the eagle and the southern cross and so 
it, it's sort of showing what Catholic, you know, spirituality and symbols, but using them through a First Nations lens. So I guess um, for for non Catholic schools and non Catholic teachers. There's a really applicable way of portraying something like this as well. You could commission an art piece from um, a local Aboriginal artist to depict a similar type of story. So if that's displayed in your school, imagine that symbolic and imagery power that that's going to have as people walk into that space. So that's just a parallel idea for a um, yep. secular school. Yep. And, I mean, with something like that, you can think about, well, what would it be like? Or you can use even a picture like that and think how are we using our First Nations lens to look at that particular object or a story? Um, and that's a really good way of looking at it. Um, this is the one, the, the hands, get those hands and those feet going, practical recognition and justice. So this is about the journey and journeying together. Um, so celebrating First Nation peoples and other significance day during the year. I was working with a school, um, non-Catholic school, and they had decided that they were going to put all of their significant days in their next year's um, student diary. So they were in their student diary and their staff diaries, and they also put the seasons, the local seasons as well. So, I mean, I thought that was a pretty good, thing for reconciliation is it's putting it front and centre um, but it you know it's also taking it home too because parents are supposed to look at student diaries and sign them when they haven't done homework and all those other things that uh, children sometimes do and it was a really good way of taking reconciliation home and getting conversations happening at home. Um, awareness of social justice issues this is something that um, a lot of especially religious order-based schools do, is they work on social justice issues. It's a big, big part of, of who they are and identity as a school. So, but being aware of those issues, like close the gap day, what it is, um, you know, close the gap day, take it into your maths classroom, write an English story. Um, yeah. Uh, and walking together in solidarity and building relationships with First Nation people. So that's where that practical recognition and justice goes, okay? So there you go. This is about walk. So anyone who's been to the Dreamtime at the G, this is a long time ago. I'm, all of those, uh, <laughs> we all look a lot younger in that photo. Um, so Avila used to walk, do every walk, uh, walk to the G, the Dreamtime, the G game, and to sort of, they were so excited about reconciliation and I remember walking and we had Patrick Dodson come up to us and ask if he could sign the banner um, yeah. and the girls had a real fan moment. They're going, oh, my God, Patrick Dodson, ah! Um, and, you know, so that's that's pretty cool. It's reconciliation when they know who Patrick Dodson is. Um, but, you know, we had Nova Paris come up. Um, we had quite a few sort of celebrities come up and want to sign our butter. Kevin Sheedy signed it as well. Um, but these girls were so into reconciliation and actually walking the talk. Um, so, yeah, it's a really important important thing there. And I'm just looking, yeah, that's all right. Um, all right. So some of you may have heard the word white privilege. I'd sort of finish on this one. So white privilege, um, if you're born of you know white or you know you have a tailwind so all through life you know you get pushed along you don't necessarily feel it life is a little bit easier um but if you're born of a different color skin you're born with a tail a, a, sorry a headwind so everything in life is a lot harder to get to and you know, you've got to work harder to get to the same place as what someone is with a tailwind. So what I think reconciliation should be about is building that uh, wind break so that those people that have a headwind, um, uh, their life is actually a lot easier for them and they've got more chance for success. Um, so I like to call this the winds of change. <laughs> That's a nice way of explaining it, Lisa. <laughs> um, 
I can say part of this is mine, part of it's not. The headwind, tailwind, um, I was watching, of all things, Dr. Phil um, and <laughs> Dolly Chu, who is C-H-U-G-H, is an American woman and it, the, the session was all about white privilege and so she described it tailwind and headwind. And for me, I got it. And then I thought, well, hang on, what can we do to stop those headwinds? And that's why I thought the farmer coming out of me, when you've got too many winds in the paddock, put up a windbreak. <laughs> so let's put up a windbreak for reconciliation so that people that are finding it hard have that extra little bit of a, a, a push in life. All right, how to be a better ally. Um, it's a journey and expect to be going backwards at some stage, you know, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. It, it will happen. But as long as you're making an effort to try and, you know, as, as Sarah was saying right at the beginning, if you've just taken the first step and this is the first thing you've done today is watch this webinar, then you're doing awesome. Um, it's okay if you don't know the answer. Um, and we're finding, you know, there's there's answers out there. Sometimes we just have to educate ourselves. And now with the power of, you know, the internet, it's a lot easier to find answers. But it's also a lot easier to find misinformation too. So we have to put our critical thinking hats on um, and mm -hmm. think about what's information and what's misinformation. And we help you a little bit with these webinars because we do um, curate resources that we send out with every webinar. And reach out to me too if you want resource packs from other webinars that you haven't been able to attend. Beautiful. Discomfort is normal. It's how we grow and learn. Um, I've been the only non-Aboriginal person at an event, um, which was way outside my comfort zone. But by the end of it, it was like, hey, this is pretty good. I like this. Um, so be prepared to sit in discomfort. Okay, listen to learn, not to respond. Um, I remember the beautiful Uncle Dave um, Wanden saying that we're born with two eyes, two ears and one mouth. Yeah. Okay, yeah. be respectful and humble. And I always say that if you get it wrong, be ready to put your big girl pants on or big boy pants on or big adult pants on um, and say, okay, I've done it wrong, what should I do next time or what? how could I have done it better? And we all learn that way. Start building relationships. It's worth it. Um, the first time I went to Gama, I had one guy, Dougie, wouldn't even talk to me. Um, by the third time I went, um, he come up to me and gave me a hug and said, I'll see you next year. So building relation takes energy and time, but it is so worth it and I the beginning when I showed the slides of those, you know, the three women weavers, they're my friends now. They started as my teacher, but they're my friends. And I often talk about this one as well. Like if you're wanting your local traditional owners to become involved in things with your schools, then you really do have to build a slow and respectful relationship. If you're going to call up this, um, the traditional owners and ask random questions when they don't know who you are, then you're going to have to expect that you're not going to get a lot of engagement and to really not take that personally and to take that as a lesson that you need to start cultivating the respectful um, relationship over time. Yeah, and, I mean, the other thing that fits in with that too, like at the moment we can see that a lot of First Nation people are under a lot of cultural load uh, because people want think that they're the experts on their voice and, and um, we need to think too that a lot of the traditional owners, especially like with treaty and the Euro justice, uh, truth and justice and stuff, they've got a lot of work that they're doing for their community too. And sometimes mm. they may not have the time to, you know, come to your school and have a talk. Um, and, you know, we have to be ready to say, well, okay, I understand you're doing really important business. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of those people like Aunty Vicky, she will say yes to everything and do everything. Um, and same with Uncle Shane and that as well. And sometimes we have to sort of remember that we have to care for our, the, our I shouldn't say our, we have to care for the elders and the, the knowledge holders yeah. um, because, you know, we we need we need them because 
you know, they're very important people. So we need to make sure that we're looking after them. Beyond, and generous you know, people, very, very generous people. It's something I yeah. always reflect on, despite everything that goes on in this country with racism and dispossession, the willingness of elders to share with generosity um, their knowledge and, and for them to give their time for us to learn. I just find it a very humbling experience. And it's something we should reflect on in this space um, if we are a non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person. And I think if you think back right at the start when we had that humility poem, yeah. that ties right back into what this is now. All right. Celebrate the wins and the positives. Sometimes you need to do that because there's going to be, it's sometimes the road gets very hard. I've been probably doing this for ooh, 15 years, 10, 15 years. I get it wrong, but, you know, sometimes I get it right. Um, and when I had, you know, like that that girl who came up and, and told me that her school felt mm. like a safe space to be, celebrate that because it's like, yes, I am making a difference. Um, a similar yeah. thing from the school I visited that had a lot of the elements without a fire carrier program, but a lot of elements that Lisa's been talking about today. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, I have a bit of a cold. And she said the same type of thing to me that when she comes to the school, she feels safe and connected which is a beautiful message and I think something that all schools should be aspiring to achieve. Mm. And, and this is where, like, imagine that you're an Aboriginal person and you're walking into a school or an early childhood centre for the first time. What do you see? Mm. Um, and think about it that way. And I tend to do that now, having my fire carrier hat on, um, even like my granddaughter's day, our fam, um, child care centre, it was everywhere and I was so excited. I actually went up to the staff and I said, you're doing an amazing job. I just want you to know that I noticed it. So, you know, it, it's getting out there. We just got to work on it. All right. I think that, what can I do? They always say, what can I do? <laughs> Teachers have got plenty of time. Why not? You know, you have all the holidays. You ought to work from nine to three. Watch, watch videos, TikTok. Um, I was speaking to Sarah on that before. Connor Bowden, um, he's really good about explaining some of the stuff around the voice. You watch, go on SBS, NITV, um, great programs on there. So mm. lots of things to watch. Um, and right. check out our, um, again, I'm plugging our resources. Webinars. Sheet, but no, yeah, we have resources on there um, and things. We have a whole section about self-education where we give links of podcasts and um series and documentaries and articles um, that we think would help you in your um, reconciliation journey. Yep. And I mean, if you want to look at the first Australians series, episode yeah. three is Victoria, read. There's lots of great books. Um, I could actually do a whole hour session on my favourite books. Um, <laughs> there's so many out there, great authors. Listen to podcasts, listen to music. Um, I I listen to your new music. I've got no idea what all the words are, but I know what some of them are. But, you know, it's great to hear artists learn. You know, we are in charge of our own learning. We can do this and we do this every day. Um, visit all oh, Curie Heritage Trust, Melbourne Museum, um, the Botanic Gardens, Budge Bim down in sort of uh, down sort of south the Grampians. There's lots of things that you can actually go and do and learn on country. That's the best best thing. You actually learn. I, I prefer to learn on country because you can't sit on a computer or read a book. It's not the same. And wherever you are, even if it's in an urban centre, I'll just remind everyone that you are on country. So mm -hmm. there's ways of doing it in an urban setting as well as going out to the countryside. <laughs> Point of distinction there. And try. You know, if this is this thing we're so afraid of getting it wrong, we don't try. Um, and if you don't try, things don't change. Um, so, you know, have a go. Sit in that discomfort um, have, and celebrate the win. Beautiful. So we love to end our webinars with one last mentee. If people um, have their phones available, that would be excellent. Just fill in one last one. 
where um, we just want to know if anything in this webinar helped you feel more confident to include First Nations perspectives at your school um, or just in your work life, because I know some people um, weren't just from schools here. That's really lovely that we're getting some yeses. Yay. That's great. The rest of you that are driving home and can't listen and QR code at the same time, we totally understand because I can see there's a bunch of you in there that aren't um, managing to use the Menti right now. You can also pop your answer in the chat and um, lovely Poppy can feed that back to us as well. So, yeah, this is really great. It's what we aim to do with this webinar series. Um, we want, and I really sort of... Um, resonate with what Lisa said, if I feel like these webinars have affected, you know, two teachers, I know there are a lot more of you here today, but just for example, <clears throat> then um, that's 30 students that you have the potential to um, affect as well, which is an extremely positive outcome, I think. So it's, yeah, continuum of learning. Um, and I think for me, just really, pushing myself to consistently read, listen, learn, all the things that Lisa mentioned. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of time. You can pop a podcast on in the car. We can find the time if we want to as just um, people who live on this land, not just as teachers or professionals. I think there would be a major shift if um, the majority of people in this country took the time to learn um, truth-telling and true Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for um, completing that last little mentee. Yeah, if anyone, Catholic or non-Catholic schools, um, want to get in contact with me, um, they can reach me via the fire carrier um, email at openingthedoors.com, or .org.au, sorry. Um, and, you know, like, check out Opening the Doors Foundation and the work that they do. They're, they're pretty amazing. Um, we had nearly a 1,000 students uh, this year that received grants. So the only thing is with the cost of living and changes and um, a lot of a lot of people that, you know, the big companies that were part of supporting the opening the doors aren't able to as much. So, you know, check them out. Um, it's a really fantastic um, organisation or foundation. Um, but, look, I can help you out if you've got questions that are fire carrier related or even anything to do with reconciliation in education space um, and reconciliation action plans, um, how to embed First Nation perspectives, I can help you out with that too. And cross-sector collaborations, I'm big on encouraging these just because you might not have a, sim a similar state school for the state school um, teachers that's in your area, but you might have a Catholic school. So there's no nothing to say you can't reach out and co-collaborate on events or reconciliation learnings together. So I think, yeah, breaking down the barriers between all the different school sectors would, would go a long way as well because everyone's doing really great things in different ways and sharing the knowledge is so important and that's why we're so thankful that Lisa was able to share um, her knowledge of, of a particular program in one of our school sectors. So thank you so much. And we've popped some resources in um, about the fire carriers in our overall resource sheet as well, which we'll send out to you either tomorrow or Monday. So we will have a next webinar on the 26th of October. We'll once again send out an invitation to you. So we hope to see you there. And thank you so much for your time, Lisa, and everyone else's time um, that they've given to us today. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for listening. <laughs> have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.